Welcome to our daily Bible study. I am your host, Dr. Terry K. Reeves, and today we're going to continue on in the study, Battlefield Socks, Problems of the Flesh. Today's lesson will be entitled, The Battle for the Soul. Let's dive right in and see what we can unpack. I want to come from 1 Peter 5 and 8. The scripture tells us, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. In this context, we realize several things, and one of the most important things, <coughs> excuse me, we must come to understand is that we have a real living adversary. This adversary, <coughs> excuse me, according to the text, is called antidikos, antidikos. And this Greek term literally means an opponent in a lawsuit or an adversary. It can also mean an opponent, specifically Satan, as the arch enemy or the adversary. It is one who is really instigating a lawsuit against us. And we're going to discuss this in a little, uh, a little bit and a little further in the studies because it's very important to understand that we are not just being fought in our endeavors. Neither are we being fought physically, mentally, or spiritually, or to keep from achieving the things that God desires. But he is literally engaging a lawsuit against us as it were because of our breach of contract in many cases. And so this antidikos is an adversary, an enemy, or an opponent in a lawsuit. It is equivalent to the word ekthros or enemy. It is applied to the devil, the great adversary of man, and the accuser of the brethren. And so it can also be affiliated with synonyms such as hupenatios, antikemenos, and diabolos, santanas, or ha paneros, the wicked one or the devil. And so let's look at this and let's unpack uh, what we can. So he says for us to be sober, be nefo. He says, so in other words, don't be intoxicated or be alert, be vigilant, be circumspect, be uh, discreet, sober as you watch, and have your thoughts collected where you're prepared to act and prepared to see from the right perspective. And so we, when we are praying consistently, we should be aligning ourselves to the perspective that the Spirit of God leads to us or brings to us as a result of being in contact with Him. So he says, be sober, be vigilant, collect your thoughts, be aware. And here, when he says to be vigilant, it is another word, Gregorio, which means to be watchful, be attentive. Uh, let your attentions be on those things that are needful and necessary. And quit always looking at the small things and allowing them to magnify if they do not have significance. Even though the scripture says it's the small foxes that destroy the vine, we have to understand what is one of these small foxes. We have to know how to look by observation, examination, analyzation, and then we do look at the small things if they are significant. Some things we use to create scenarios that are really just distractions. And when we are distracted, the enemy can move. And sometimes you can be distracted by your own desires, your own thoughts, and even your own fears. He says, now, be sober, be vigilant. Uh, don't be intoxicated. Don't let your mind wander. But collect your thoughts and watch. He says, for your adversary. Remember, he says, your antidikos, your opponent who's watching to gain access to everything he can to bring you before the court of law, sometimes even in the natural, but specifically in the spiritual. Your adversary, 
the devil. And this is one of the ways in which he uh, wars against your soul. The term devil is diabolos. Diabolos is slanderer. And so you have to rein in your circle. You have to be careful who you connect with. You have to be careful who you bring into the purview of your life. He's a slanderer. He's treacherous. He's the informer. Who is he informing? He informs other spiritual entities that are operating within this, uh, the same genre to destroy you and your household. And he is a traitor. Always remember the scripture tells us to love our enemies. I remember discussing with an individual uh, about loving our enemies, but we have to understand why they became our enemies. How is it that people can just look at you and not like you? In many cases, what is an enemy is actually a tool of the enemy, a tool of Satan. He gets into people, he shifts their perspective of you. He can cause hatred, he can cause anger, he can cause um, a heightened sense of anger and wrath that leads to murder. And so he says, the devil, he's treacherous, he's slanderous, he breaks up relationships, he can cause betrayal. And he says he is as a roaring lion. He walketh about. Very important. He is peripatio. He is walking. He is moving. He is, um, again, roaming. He's a rover. And he sometimes accompanies you in where you go. And from the Hebrew um, aspect, it means to maintain a certain walk of life and conduct. And so he treads around. He is walking at large, especially as proof of his ability. And so he's proving a point that he can shadow you, proving a point that he can gain entry, proving a point that he can get next to you to find out intel concerning you. And with this information, he seeks to devour you. And here this word devour, catapino. Uh, catapino means to drink, to swallow up, to gulp down, to absorb, to engulf, to overwhelm, to destroy or annihilate. And so he seeks then to annihilate your soul. He is a sworn enemy and he seeks to do whatever he can to bring you into the pursuit of death and destruction. It's very important here because when we look at this term devour, it leads us to so many different things and so many different persuasions. When we talk about to drink or to swallow, he's talking about as a lion would swallow something whole without even chewing it. And so it indicates then that the mindset of the spiritual entity is to literally with great um, anger and great wrath and great visceralness to attack you for any reason, to attack you simply because you are connected to God. And so he seeks to oppose you legally. He seeks to bring you up before charges whenever you fail. He runs to God and he accuses you or he may accuse you to other people. He may seek to destroy you through the hand of other people. And that's why you have to know how to pray. You have to know how to ask for God's forgiveness. You have to know how to utilize combatant prayers. And so he seeks to gulp you down. And then the other important term is absorb. He seeks to absorb you. When anything is absorbed, it is pulled into something else, which literally means that as it's absorbed, it loses its reality. And so one thing that he seeks to do to war with your soul is to anesthetize it to the point where it cannot function, it cannot think straight, its emotions are out of whack, it's rendered helpless as it relates to choosing. And so as he seeks to destroy the soul, he seeks to then render it useless for you for those around you, 
if you're a pastor for your ministry, he seeks to so much absorb you and cause you to be absorbed with so many other things. So many other things are now pulled into the mind, pulled into the forefront, where that's what you put your attention to. And as you are being absorbed with these things and putting your attention to them, those are the things that you will continually think about. And if you're thinking about those things that are counterintuitive, counterproductive, your mind will suffer and you will literally start shifting and changing your brain, helping you to think consistently in a counterintuitive and a counterproductive manner. I'm sorry we are all out of time. I thank you for joining us. Remember, like us and also subscribe. I thank you again for joining us. God bless you. I am your host, Dr. Derek A. Reeves, and this is our daily Bible study. Until next time, God bless.